In this video, I'm going to compare a 2019 Model X with a 2022 Model X. Now, prior to uh, 2019 model, I had a 2016 model. And the difference between 2016 and 2019 were not that many. However, um, with this 2022 model, it is drastically different. So let's talk about it. I am going to divide this video into f uh, four parts. First, uh, interior, exterior, um, technology, and then finally I'm going to talk about acceleration. So as far as the exterior differences goes, uh, there are not that many, however, there are a few. So for example, um, the turn signal lights um, between 2019 and 22 are definitely different. As you can see, the turn signal lights are a little bit bigger on the 2019 model and um, smaller um, in the 2022 model. Then the next difference are the wheels. Uh, even though I did not upgrade the wheels um, either for 2022 or 2019, but they are different. Um, this one this one has a more black uh, theme than the other one. Even the trims, um, the 2019 have silver trims versus 2022 has these black trims. Now, personally, I like silver more than black, but I, I guess that's uh, very subjective. I also noticed that the color, uh, the red shade, is slightly different between 2019 and 22. The 2019 model is more towards red, uh, whereas the uh, 2022 model is has a little touch of orange in it. I also noticed that the brake calipers are of a different color. So on the 2022 model, it's all black, whereas in the 2019 model, the brake calipers are red. Now on the flip side, the interior is where most of the differences are. In the older one, the screen is vertical, the steering is like any other car, and the gauge cluster um, is also co uh, significantly different from the newer model. Several changes are made in the gauge cluster. Uh, the older gauge cluster, surprisingly, is a lot more configurable than the newer one. So on the right-hand side, I can display the charging status, the trip, um, you know, trip odometer, uh, and a lot, of, a lot of other things. But in the newer model, uh, all it shows is the speed on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, in this one, I can see my music and... Uh, so a few other things, but in the old, in the newer one, all I can display is the map. And here's the interior of the uh, newer model. Uh, of course, the most controversial thing is the yoke steering. Uh, in my opinion, it's not that bad. Once you get used to it, it's it's pretty good. Um, and the gauge cluster is pretty static. When I say static, I mean there's very little configuration you could do. Um, on the right hand side, there's speed. In the middle, I see that um, image of the car, which displays a bunch of information, um, uh, you know, about the vehicle. On the left, where currently I see tap to activate uh, drive, this is the the new feature in um, in Model X, and I assume also in Model S, where you don't have to. Uh, um, select a gear the car automatically knows if you want to drive forward or in reverse and when once you hit the um, brake pedal um, it automatically puts a vehicle in, in drive and and all you do is hit the gas to drive forward the center screen is where most of the significant differences are um, everything that used to be a button in the earlier version is now part of the screen. When I click here, I can select a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, these options are quite different from what I see uh, in the 2019 model. And almost everything is now done through the screen. 
One other feature that's quite different from any other car is that there are no stocks. The, uh, the turn signals are also buttons, so this is the uh, left and right button. The horn is a button, uh, pretty much everything is a button. Um, and in the in the center gauge I see that tap to activate drive and all I gotta do is just press my brake pedal and that's it it's gonna start driving if I need to put it in park I press this button and then it puts it into park another cool feature that I really like is the ability to tilt the screen so I can tilt the screen either left or, or right, you know, either facing the passenger or the driver by just pressing these buttons here. And you can see the, uh, the screen is actually moving and I can move it in either direction, which is, which is really nice. Another cool feature in this new model is this car wash option where I go to the service tab and then I can select car wash. So it's, uh, I assume it's very convenient when I'm going through a car wash here. Another cool feature um, in the newer model is the external speaker. The older one only did not have any external speakers, so this emissions testing mode, you could only play these uh, sounds internal in the car. But now, by pressing this button here, I could play these sounds um, on the outside, so it's a really cool thing if you want to play a prank on someone. And talking about external speaker, uh, the newer model has this uh, app called Boombox. And when I turn this megaphone on, I could actually talk inside the car and it's going to repeat my voice from the outside speaker. Now, the best part about this horizontal screen is that the movies play on full screen versus in the older one, um, there used to be a black patch, uh, you know, both uh, top and bottom. The center console is also quite different from the older version. Up here I have two wireless cell phone chargers which is very very nice. The older model had just a iPhone charger. In the center uh, there's plenty of storage. Um, I can move these um, shelves and uh, you know adjust my storage, the cup holders and then in the center there's uh, another uh, big storage here. One other significant difference is the leg room um, uh, for, the, for the driver. Um, in this case, I have the seat all the way back. And now I'm going to show you the newer model. Um, so you'll see the difference between the railing and the edge of the seat. Here's a newer model. I'd say it's probably two more inches uh, for the driver here. Now in the back seat, the major difference is the center screen. Um, it's really nice because uh, the uh, passengers in the back can now control their temperature. Uh, they can watch movies, Netflix, whatnot uh, on that screen. And you can watch Netflix even when the car is moving, which the kids really love. Uh, obviously, in the older model, um, the car needed to be in park in order to watch Netflix. Now let's talk about some driving experience. Um, in my opinion, the ride quality is pretty much identical in both models. But the major difference is is in zero to sixty, so let's set look at that. Now I was doing these tests on um, a Sunday morning on regular road, so I did not want to go past beyond 60, which was kind of like the speed limit um, on that road. Another important thing that I did not do was I did not use the ludicrous plus mode uh, in the 2019, and the 2022 model has a drag strip mode. Um, and I assume that if I had used both of those modes, the numbers would have been a little bit better because the published numbers from Tesla are definitely better. Another very important difference in the uh, 2022 model, the Plaid, um, I have a feeling that the acceleration is a two-stage process. The 0 to 60 is stage 1, but then it shoots, once it gets like 50, 60 miles an hour, it shoots, which I call it the stage two. And that stage two 
is in my opinion more powerful than 0 to 60 so at once you get to like 50 60 miles an hour and and, and that's when you feel the g forces in your guts and and that's a very cool experience all right so that's pretty much it uh let me know in uh, in the comments what you think about this video